Real World Computer Programming for Kids, Step 30, Creating and Testing CSV Files of Different Sizes, and a Bonus Beauty Treatment for the Form. As solemnly promised, in this step I will show you how you can create your own lists of questions and candidate answers and add them to this app, providing examples of CSV files that contain both less than 10 and more than 10 sets of questions and answers. Here are the things that need to be done in order to add another CSV file into the mix. 1. Create the CSV file as shown in previous steps. Basically, you simply add on each line a question followed by three candidate answers, separating each with a comma. For example, if you wanted to ask the user who was the first famous rapper and give as candidate answers Pose Raven, MC Hammer, and One Sick Puppy, you would write on one line in a text file using an app such as Notepad the following, who was the first famous rapper, comma, one sick puppy, comma, MC Hammer, comma, asterisk, pose raven. A couple of things to notice about this. The candidate answers are in alphabetical order. You don't have to do this, but it's sensible because it will prevent you from always putting the correct answer in a certain location or using the same pattern over and over, such as putting the correct answer first, then second, then third. By using alphabetical order, the pattern is not predictable and is completely random. You won't be inadvertently providing a tip-off as to which answer is correct, or a tell, telegraphing what's going on, so to speak. As for what to select for wrong answers, I suggest going for one that could easily be thought by many to be correct, and one that is simply funny or outrageous. In this example, some may think MC Hammer makes sense. As far as I know, there is no such rapper as One Sick Puppy. The correct answer may surprise some, too, but note the line from Edgar Allan Poe's most famous poem, The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping. And who was this rapper? The poem goes on to reveal the heretofore secret identity of this mysterious rapper. Open here I flung the shutter when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. So it is proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that Poe's Raven was the first rapper. The poem was written in 1845, probably before any of you were born. Poe's unnamed Raven was the first rapper, not Cool Beans or M&M's or Tupac Shaker or Lawrence Welk or any of those pretenders to the throne. And then the newsletter shows a picture of a girl on Poe. 2. Save the file you have created as a CSV file. Give it the CSV file extension rather than sticking with the default TXT extension. 3. Verify that you have saved the file in the proper location, where the app is expecting to find them, or find it, namely in C colon backslash programming for kids. If you already saved it or them, somewhere else if you created more than one, cut and paste them or it from the current location into there. Note, remember to only have commas separating the values not within the questions or answers themselves. For example, instead of, if Tony had a dog, comma, it would be, you have to omit the comma, like so. If Tony had a, com had a dog, it would be, if this bothers you, omitting commas where they grammatically belong, you can change the separator to a semicolon or tilde or something else. But then you would have to change the code where the lines are split on commas. This is, sorry, we've come to that point finally, an exercise left to the reader.
So to cut to the chase, I have created two, count them two, new CSV files and placed them in the proper folder. One has 11 sets of questions and answers and the other has four. If you want to copy the two files I made rather than create your own, you can copy and paste them from below. Name this first one whatever you want to, maybe tubthumper.csv. So it shows after that four questions along with three candidate answers with the correct answer prepended by an asterisk or a star. Name this one also whatever you want, but something different than the first one, such as the rain in Spain falls mainly on the sheet .csv. And then it has 11 sets of a question and three candidate answers with the correct answer, asterisked or starred. The first CSV file, tubthumper.csv or whatever you named it, has four sets of questions and answers. The second CSV file, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the sheep.csv, or whatever you decided after much gut-wrenching deliberation to name it, has 11 sets of questions and answers. What should happen is that the file names are read into the combo box as they are in the right place, and C, Programming for Kids, and have the expected file extension, CSV. Let's run the app now and see. The four files all appear in the combo box as they should, and a screenshot shows that. The question in of in label correctly displays that there are 11 questions when we select that file, and a screenshot shows that. Also, the correct percentage is computed for each answer, and yet another screenshot shows that. Why do I say that this rather bizarre number, 63.64, is the correct percentage? Well, with 10 questions, the final percentage would always be divisible by 10, such as 50%, 80%, 100%, etc. But with an odd, both literally and figuratively, number like 11, each answer has a real number as its step percentage value. In this case, with 11 questions, each question counts for a little over 9%. 9.0909090901 9 to be precise. And that number times 7 is 63.63636363664. So the math is being done correctly by our app. It is displayed as 63.64 because we earlier limited the number of values past the decimal point to display to 2 and 63.63636363664 rounds to 63.64. When selecting the other new CSV file, the one with only four sets of questions and answers, we see that it works fine and displays the combination demonstrated at the outset of the question about the first wrapper. So, we made it. The app works fine. Yet, sometimes there's a yet, there is still one thing we could add to make it just a little bit better. Namely, give the question label at the top of the form a different color, other than black, to make it stand out from the rest. If you've noticed, or even if you haven't actually, I already did this quite a while ago without saying anything about it, not wanting to brag, but now I'll show you how to do it yourself. 1. Select the form1.cs design tab to show the form. 2. Select the question label, LBL question. 3. On the properties pane, expand the appearance section and find the four color property. 4. Drop down the four color property, or maybe I should say drop up in this case. And it shows a screenshot of that, the available selections appearing above. Five, from the possibilities presented, select a color you like, such as menu highlight. And it shows that being selected in another screenshot. So that's it for this step. And we will move on to other things in the next, of course. Until then.